What's up guys? So today's video is gonna be all about bulking. Um, I wanna basically tell you how to get fucking massive, mate. Got a pimple as well. Just thought we'd clear that shit up before we start. So if you don't like pimples, um, stop watching now or unsubscribe because it's gonna annoy the shit out of you. Um, and I don't want that. So yeah, so now that that's cleared up, um, we'll get into it. So I've written a few things down that I wanna cover. Um, yeah, so any more questions, I'll leave them in the comments and I'll get back to them. Um, or I'll make another video depending on it. So, yeah, bulking. Let's do it. All right, so why to bulk? So the main reason why to bulk is that your body needs to eat more calories than you're burning. So you've got to create that energy imbalance by eating more than you're burning, basically. So that's how muscle is grown. That's how tissue is grown. So whether it's muscle or fat, your body needs to be in that calorie surplus. So you're eating more than you're burning. Opposite if you're burning fat. So for that reason, if you're taking in more food than you're burning, you're either gonna put on muscle or fat. So if you're obviously weight training and you're doing everything right on that side of things, you're gonna put on muscle, hopefully. Um, if you're not doing anything, you're gonna put on fat. So that's why, is you're in that surplus, and that's why you always, you tend to put on a bit of fat when you're trying to bulk, you know, putting on muscle. It's just sort of like a side effect, because if you're eating to grow, you're gonna grow a bit of fat as well. So that's why you wanna find that sweet spot where, you're, you know, maybe eating 200 to 300, depends on the person, like calories more than your maintenance, and you're slowly in a surplus, like not too aggressive, where you can build muscle and put on the littlest amount of fat. It's hard to just build muscle and not put on any fat because your body's gonna be wanting to store a few things. So you wanna minimize the fat gain whilst maximizing muscle. So that's what's really, it's hard to find that balance. There is a sweet spot, but it depends on you. So you gotta use trial and error. You as an individual have to figure out your calorie maintenance needs, and then you have to slowly increase, whereby you're not putting on too much fat, and then you're slowly growing. So maybe I aim for 200 grams of body weight increase per week, but in the past I've also aimed for like 300, but realistically, um, it's muscle, so it doesn't grow that fast. So give it maybe, yeah, 200 grams a week, I'd say, and that's sort of a good indication of, of how you're growing and how you're progressing. If you're putting on 500 grams to a kilo a week, most of that's gonna be fat, so it's too much, and there's no point. So I'd cut it back. And I'm back with some aminos, <laughs> and because my mouth is getting dry as shit, I'll be honest with you. Um, but yeah, so what I was gonna say next was, um, so what happens if you get too fat? So a few things, a few reasons why you don't want to get um, too fat when you're bulking. For one, it, the more weight you put on, the harder it is going to be to get rid of that. So if you put on like 20 kilos extra body fat, then you're going to have to cut harder and more aggressively when it comes to cutting to get rid of that. And so what happens is you're more likely to tap into your muscle storage. So you might put on more weight, but by the same token, you might actually lose more muscle when you have to cut later. Uh, two, it's not going to run efficiently if you put on all this fat. Certain hormones in your body will decrease, like your testosterone is going to decrease a bit, and you're going to put. It's going to be a lot harder to put on muscle as well. Um, again, the insulin is a whole other story when you're bulking. I might talk about it later as well. Um, but basically, you'll become insulin resistant, maybe due to incre like increasing your carbs so much, which means your body's not going to utilize insulin. So that's what basically what diabetes is, what type two diabetes is. You want to minimize the fat gain, maximize the muscle gain, like I said, and keep it to that 200 gram increases a week. Okay, so macros. In terms of macros, you do want to count. You want to track everything when you're bulking, and similarly start with your maintenance calories, and then increase them by maybe 500. It's pretty arbitrary, but you have to tr use trial and error. So let's say you increase them by 500, um, get your protein, 1 to 1.5 grams of protein per pound of body weight, start with that. Um, get a good fat percentage, what you want to go for, and figure out how many fats you want to get, and then fill the rest with carbs. And then from there, you're going to try that for a little bit, and you're always going to have to sort of increase, because your body's going to adapt fairly fast. So go by the scales, put on a little bit of weight each week, and then maybe add 100 calories in, and keep doing so. So keep increasing your calories over time, in accordance with your body weight. So. If you're putting on weight very slowly, maybe increase them a little bit. If you're putting on weight too quick, cut them back a little bit. It's pretty simple. Um, it's basically the opposite of cutting. Um, in terms of supplements and gainers, I only recommend people to take weight gainers if they literally physically can't eat any more food because your body's going to prefer food all the time. 
instead of just you know carbs and sugars in weight gainers because it's the way that it works in your body is just not as efficient and effective as is unprocessed foods so always go for food first um, but in terms of supplements still I'll say um, a good protein post workout like a WPI or a whey blend um, pre workouts again optional Creatine, definitely. So have five grams in the morning and five grams with your post-workout or five pre, five post, whatever you like. Um, glutamine, if you want. Um, some people like it, some people don't. And then if you feel like you want to up your carbs and you don't want to get it through food, add some maltodextrin in as a cheap carb and mix it with your pre, mix it with your aminos, mix it with your post-workout whey and just have that around your workout times. It's a really easy way of getting the carbs in. Now, dirty bulking versus clean. So, dirty bulking, for those who don't know, is basically when you get calories through anything. It's assuming a calorie is a calorie. You get through fast food, pizza, whatever, um, as opposed to clean bulking, where it's basically eating unprocessed foods. I believe that if you if you dirty bulk, for me in the past, I've tried it, and I put on heaps of fat. So, I used to get KFC like after the gym all the time, just smash it, and that just, it's stacked on the fat. So, it, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I reckon my body works a lot better when I'm taking in unprocessed foods. So instead of having a Zinger burger, chips, tenders, all that shit, I'd have, you know, sweet potato, actual normal chicken breast that I cook, you know, good fats, avocado, stuff like that. Even if it's the same calories, I think my body will take it a lot better. Um, but yeah, it's dirty bulking sort of only good for those who can't possibly eat their calories from clean food. So some of the really skinny guys, the need like, you know, 6,000 calories plus and they can't manage it, then fine, go eat whatever you need. If you need to have some ice cream to fill it in, then do that, you know, I'm not against that, that's fine. But I know for me, I will get way too fat if I'm just smashing fast food or chocolate or anything like that. So I have to sort of reel it in a bit. A good method as well um, is doing little mini cuts. So people say, how long should you bulk for? And I reckon, you need to bulk for as long as possible because that's when you're putting on muscle. If that's if that's the only time when you're going to put on size, do it for as long as possible. Um, but in saying that, if you keep bulking, keep bulking. Obviously, it's going to get uh, you know it's going to, you'll get diminishing returns sort of thing. So you might have to do a little mini cut every oh, I don't know every few months to you know shed some unwanted body fat. Um, to reset your hormone levels, get your insulin sensitivity going again, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. So a good way of doing it, say, is let's go, say, bulk for a few months, put on a bit of weight, depending on how you look and how much fat you've put on. Um, keep going if you're, if you're still lean, but if you're not and you're feeling just shit and sluggish and you put on too much fat, then do a mini cut. So um, restrict your calories, even carbs, restrict your carbs, um, maybe be in a 500 deficit of calories and do that for about four to eight weeks. Probably eight, maybe too long, maybe four to six weeks, enough time to get rid of some unwanted body fat, get your insulin sensitivity ramping again, so you're gonna take in carbs a lot better. And then by the time you come back to your bulking, you sort of reset, you sort of take a couple steps back in order to take a few more forward. So that's one way of doing it. I've never really done that before, just because I've always done these massive extended bulks and then a big cut and it's sort of, it's, I've wasted a lot of time cutting over the years when I could have just, you know, stayed leaner and bulked for longer, but it is what it is. Um, so I've talked about insulin a bit. I'll, I'll go over that briefly. Um, it's hard to explain, but when you're eating a heap, a heap of carbs, your body responds by producing insulin, which is basically a transporter. It will, it's more anabolic than test, and it will basically transport the, uh, the sugars out of your blood. So whether it takes the sugars to your muscle, like glycogen, your liver glycogen, or your fat, it'll transport them. So imagine if you, like for me right now, I'm not eating many carbs. So if you imagine my insulin spikes are very rare. I'll have insulin spike in my brekkie when I have carbs, and maybe post-workout when I have carbs. But if on the other end, if you're eating a shitload of carbs all the time, all day, and you're getting these spikes, your body's not gonna do that all the time. It's gonna, so if you have a lot of insulin in your system, your body's gonna be less efficient with it, like with what the insulin does, and that's insulin resistance. That's when you've got all this insulin floating around, and then the receptors for insulin are like, 
well, what the fuck do you want me to do with this? <laughs> there's, there's all this insulin you know, like, all the time, so they become less efficient at their job, which is to transport the sugars. And that results in high blood sugar and diabetes. That's what diabetes is, is type 2 diabetes is insulin resistance. So that's why if you bulk for a long period of time, your insulin, you become more insulin resistant, which, is, which means your body handles carbs worse. So that means you might not get that transporting to muscle, it might just transport to fat. Because insulin resistance doesn't occur in fat cells. It only occurs in muscle cells. So this means that your body will be, yep, let's shoot that to fat, but it, it's not gonna wanna transport the carbs to muscle as much, if you know what I mean. Hello? Hey, Jack, how are you? Mum, I'm trying to film a YouTube video, but I'm good, how are you? <laughs> I want you to put the oven on, I'm starving. Alright, I'll put the oven on. <laughs> Alright, see ya. Kill me, alright, see ya. Fucking hell, Mum. Hey guys, I've got to put the oven on. Guess who put the oven on? This guy. <laughs> Where was I? Shit. Mm, resistance, that's right. Okay, so the oven is on. Um, <laughs> nah, what I was going to say was, um, back on the resistance, what, how to fix this is, yeah, like I said with the mini cuts before, so have your time bulking and then take your carbs out, go really low carb for maybe four weeks to just reset that and get a bit more insulin sensitive. And you'll find your pumps will be so much better because your body will be transporting the carbs to your muscles instead of, instead of your fat, hopefully. Um, what else? So training when bulking, a lot of people say, you know, should I train six reps, you know, what should I do? I always kept my training the same for hypertrophy, so 10 to 12 reps, sort of, you know, maybe if you want to work on strength, it's a good time to do so, because yeah. What? I just wanted to interrupt you filming again. Why? Just for a joke. Don't, you've already featured. Keep it, stop busting nuts. So if you want to work on strength, it's a good time to do so because your body is going to be, you know, in a in a fed state sort of thing. Cause you're in a surplus, so you're more likely to use those calories to grow and also to get stronger. So if you want to do a, like a periodization of strength, go for it. I sort of have never done a full strength program. I might incorporate it and do the first exercise of strength and then sort of go more bodybuilding style. Um, but generally, I've kept my training the same. Just aiming at growth and try to get a little bit stronger all the time progressively. So overload or do another rep. That's what overload is. In my experience of bulking, I've always gone a little too heavy because I thought I might as well, I don't want to leave any stone unturned. I just want to get big. So I'd be in, I reckon, a uh, 700, 800 calorie surplus a lot of the time, I think. And I was just all out. Um, which, I mean, I put on muscle, but I didn't put on, you know, quality weight. It was a lot of fat. Because what I was doing, like, I was doing things like, I was having sometimes about 5,000 calories worked up to that. Um, I was having a lot of fruits, which I think was good because it's got good enzymes in there. So I think I did that right. Like mango, pineapple, uh, papaya, stuff like that. Um, good carbs as well. Um, but then back in the early days, like I was having gainers all the time. Before bed, I'd smash a bowl of oats and a gainer. Like I was just anything. I was always, I was never hungry. I was always full, always sort of felt sick. But I mean, it's, it kind of worked for me. Um, but again, I had a hard time cutting that away. And when I'd cut, I'd probably cut muscle. So it, it sort of sucks that way too. So building muscle and burning fat. So some people think, yeah, we'll do a lean bulk and we'll get leaner. It doesn't work like that unless you're, only, you're new to training or you're, you're on anabolics, because as a natural, if you're gonna bulk, um, you're not, you can't really get leaner. You can only either maintain what you've got slightly or get a little bit fatter, that's the best bet. You can't really get leaner. Um, cardio when bulking, no, unless it's for a purpose to, you know, for your cardiovascular fitness. But if, you, in, if you're looking at like walking on a treadmill or something like that, no point, because all that's doing is creating that imbalance by reducing you know, by burning more calories, but you might as well eat less. So, if you're gonna do cut, and plus your body becomes pretty, it adapts to whatever you're doing. So if you start doing cardio, it's gonna burn less and less calories from that cardio. So what happens when you want to cut and you got to add cut? Like you got to, you're still doing cardio, and you increase it. Your body just is like, I'm over this. I'm already burning less. 
So you're not gonna get as much out of it. You might as well stop your cardio and then bring cardio back in as a tool when you're cutting because it'll be much more effective at, at getting rid of the fat. So I've always never touched, never touched anything to do with cardio when I'm bulking. Um, another main reason for bulking is often overlooked is that it sort of boosts your body's ability to handle calories and to use calories. So if you think about it, like me now, I'm maybe eating 1,900 calories. If I was to bulk, and then this is me cutting now, by the way, just the way it is. But if I was to bulk and slowly get my calories up to like, what, three, 4,000, let's just say, then when it, when it comes time to cut, I can maybe cut it two and a half thousand calories at this point now. So you're eating more food and it's much more enjoyable. It's much easier. So a really good thing about bulking is, um, like Skinny Aaron says, that period of time eating at a caloric surplus. It's just that time eating at a surplus, which makes it easier later when you want to cut because you've got all of this you know, calories that you're used to eating, so you, you just eat a little bit less, which is, is a massive difference when you're cutting from eating two and a half thousand to eating, you know, 1800. It's a massive difference. So it's really good to have that off season to sort of reset everything and boost the rate that your body burns the calories. There's a few things you can do as well. Like it depends if you're a hard gainer, like if you're really skinny, you can't put any weight. That just means you've got to eat more than the average person. It doesn't mean you're your genetics suck and you're never gonna build anything. It just means you have to eat more. You gotta, if your body doesn't put on weight, it means you need more food. Um, and there's things you can do about that. You can't just you know, complain about it and say, no, nah, my body doesn't put on weight. It's like, you're not doing everything you can. There's guys like in the old school methods, they used to mix up smoothies of like ice cream, protein shakes, peanut butter, like all this crazy shit, mix up a smoothie and then get, and it'd be like 4,000 calories, right? And then they think, as long as I get this in, in a whole day. So what they do is have, you know, in between meals, maybe a little bit of it, keep having it throughout the day. And then at the end of the day, they've got in 4,000 calories just from this drink, just from a smoothie, in addition to their meals. So I used to do a similar thing, but just have a smoothie by itself. So I could make a smoothie with 1,000 plus calories just by going a couple tablespoons of coconut oil, peanut butter, full eggs, oats, protein, you know, and then you get all these good fats in, which, um, which really increase your calories. So another thing you can do is, I've seen guys do it, I've never done it, it just seems weird. But you can have shots of like olive oil, and they have like four of those a day. Um, because olive oil is pretty good for you if you don't cook it. And you literally, because it's just pure fats. So things like that, if you make use of like raw oils or coconut oil is really good. Um, easy to eat, doesn't fill you up. And um, it's quite good for you as well, and you can smash that in. So even like you know, adding coconut oil to every time you have a protein shake, or adding a couple eggs, or little things like that, um, they're sort of little tricks to, to get it down. Or you know, start with six to eight small meals, and then slowly increase the quant like the quantity of food per meal, and then you're having eight big meals by the end of it. You don't even know. That's basically. I think that's all I wanted to cover, guys. So if I've missed anything, let me know. I know it's a bit sort of all over the joint. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments um, and I'll get back to them in the comments or another video, whichever. But to summarize, caloric surplus, keep it clean, track your calories, increase them progressively, um, watch the scales, you know, watch your body weight, see what it's doing, train hard. Your body, you know, you want to be like earning that food. You don't want to just have a shit session and then go eat just cra like, like crazy, you know. So earn your calories. Um, yeah, be smart about it. So if you need to take the mini cuts or what do you have to do? Just be smart about it. And yeah, hopefully you'll get fucking massive, mate. So that's all for me, guys. Um, stay massive.